Oh my god, guys, this statue is so terrifying! Once again, to Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles, your one stop for all things high-end statue collecting reviews, unboxings, statue chats, live entertainment like Rogues Gallery Live, and so much more. My name is Chris, and I'm the Batman statue collector, and today we are going to be reviewing, I mean, look at this thing. It is the one-third scale Joker from Iron Studios. Now, I also want to thank each and every one of you that tuned into the live unboxing with Dan Default from Wayne Manor North. That was so much fun. Thank you so very much for so many people joining us live. If you missed it, I will put the link right up here so you can check it out after we do the review. And like I said, we are reviewing this today, the one-third scale Joker from Iron Studios. Now, I have not had a tremendous amount of Iron Studios pieces. I have the Bane vs. Batman diorama. I have the, the, you know, the Batman 89 Batmobile back here. But this is my first one-third scale piece from them. And I really wanted to see how it compared to some of my other Prime 1 pieces. Of course, I've got multiple one-third scale Jokers. And I really wanted to see how this one held up uh, in terms of quality, in terms of size, in terms of paint, and everything else because I was so sold from the moment I saw this, that again, I had to pre-order it, but I really wanted to compare and contrast. And I'm gonna do that for you guys on this video today. Um, I'm also going to show you all the details, all the swap outs and everything else, of course, measurements. So we're gonna do all of that today here on the channel. But I did wanna give you a 360 spin so you get an idea of what you're getting. Um, I can tell you guys, I am very, very sold on this piece. It is really, really good and it looks so much better even in hand than it does in photographs. Um, there's been a lot of great photographs, and he actually photographs really, really well, but I still think he looks better in person, um, especially the color choices here, the base. I really wanted to buy this because of the low footprint, the smaller footprint base, um, which I'm very, very impressed with. The base is really one of the best parts of this statue. Um, but I do want to share all of my thoughts on this piece. But before we do that, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Click that notification bell. Choose all. That way you're notified every single time I put out new content. And without further ado, let's get into the review. All right, guys. So I have him here all set up on the table. <laughs> I mean, just look at this thing. It is so incredible. Of course, this is the Greg Capullo-inspired sculpt. Oh my gosh, it's just insanely good. So I, I do want to show you the whole figure. I want to show you all the swap outs and everything else. Uh, but uh, we're going to start with the base like we always do. And this base is one of the main reasons I bought this piece. Um, it has this incredible gargoyle here. And I want you to notice not only the gargoyle and how well it's sculpted, but I also want you to notice all of like the rust elements here. You see all of those kind of rust colors here to really age it to really look like it's been out in the rain for a very long time. This piece is very reminiscent of the uh, the original Batman premium format. Uh, very similar sculpt. Uh, I just really like this a lot. And again, like I said, this is one of the main reasons I bought this base was its low profile. Uh, it doesn't have a massive base. It's basically about the size of a uh, Arkham uh, base, one of the original bases. So that's really nice. It doesn't take up a tremendous amount of room. Of course, I'll give you guys measurements here in a bit. but I absolutely love the dynamite. The dynamite, again, was a big selling feature for me. I really love the storytelling here and all of the sticks. There's so much dynamite here. It's just absolutely incredible. Of course, uh, it does go around all size, which I'll show you, but it's all tied together, all fully sculpted, and I just absolutely love that. Of course, we also have this nice little Easter egg here. Um, I just think that's a lot of fun. It's Batman on the spring. Now, that can be taken off. It does key in. So, you know, the, the key is visible, but if you don't like this, if you feel like it's too cartoony, you don't have to have it in there. Otherwise, it literally just pops right back into place. So, again, that's something you can keep in mind. But I do think that's a fun Easter egg. And, again, it's on the very back. So, like, if you're looking at it straight on, you don't see it. So, again, it's just fun that it's back there. Something a little different. Uh, let me show you the back sides. These dynamite sticks, again, I just think it's so much fun. The red really pops the color uh, it is a bit. It is a bit of a muted red. I think the whole statue itself is kind of a bit muted, um, kind of like some of the recent sideshow pieces. Um, it isn't as bold, which I, I like. I like that it's kind of a muted look. 
Um, but again, all of the dynamite sticks look so good. And then of course you have this explosive box back here. It says caution explosives and it has it crossed out and then it says boom, uh, which is fantastic. Of course, it has the uh, wires going to the dynamite and then all the dynamite sticks are uh, tied together. And again, you have the plunger right here at the top. This is a piece that uh, does come out um, and keys in, but I just absolutely love the storytelling here. Again, it's hidden behind the gargoyle and it just looks fantastic, I think. I absolutely love this base. Again, I just think it is so well done. Um, it is by far one of my favorite bases uh, in my collection right now. It is just really fun. And again, all of that nice patina on the statue, it just really makes the whole thing look really great. And again, I just love it. I just love it. Let me give you a 360 spin here. Once again, just to show you all of it. Pretty awesome, right? All right, let me spin back here because I know you're going to want to see some of the elements of the statue. And here, let's start with the shoes. Um, you can really see some of the weathering here. Looks really good. You have, again, that patina on the steel toe, which looks really great. That, that traditional kind of joker shoe, a spat. Um, I guess the spats are in the back, uh, but uh, the shoe, it just looks great, right? I just think it looks really fantastic. And again, all of this little metal detail here on the shoe looks very realistic. And then, of course, you also have the other one, which again, looks very good to me. I love the details. You have those kind of yellowish color socks. Again, it is fully sculpted, but you can see the pull of the sock on his ankle. And again, that side detailing on the shoe. And I think we can see, no, we can't see a sock on this side. So again, that yellow ties in to the yellow up above, which is nice. You have the yellow sock right there, and then of course the yellow in his vest. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, so I mentioned it in my video, my live unboxing, that I felt like the texturing is really, really good on this, but it is a little different texture than let's say a Prime One piece. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily here. Um, I, I really think this is really good. Um, but you do notice a difference whenever you see it next to a Prime One piece. And I am going to show you, uh, compare those for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But I really think the purples are really good here. Again, really nice texturing. You notice again the folds. Um, and I think that that just is really well done. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, the pants look really great. It's a nice color purple. It's not a super bold purple. Uh, it is a little bit, like I said, a little bit more muted. But it has nice shading, as you can see, those darker areas. Um, you know, they really did a nice job with the, the spray here. It just looks really good. Um, we have one of the swap outs here is the bang flag, uh, which is, again, kind of a plastic material that does go into the gun itself. And then you have this long barrel gun. And, of course, his hand that keys in. That's one of the hand swap outs. Um, I think the glove looks really good. As you can see, it's really well sculpted, really well shaded. Skin texture, um, again, we were talking about Prime 1 pieces, so I think it's very good. I think it's very similar, more similar to like maybe like a sideshow skin texture than a Prime 1 skin texture. Um, it's really hard to compete with that Prime 1 um, skin. Uh, some people don't like this gun because it's so long. It, it, again, it reminds me of the Batman 89 gun. Um, so it's a little bit more, I guess you could say cartoony. Maybe it would have been cool if the gun would have been a little shorter so the flag doesn't go down so low. Um, and so that might be maybe a reason why people might like the mallet swap out. Or, as somebody suggested, just have his hand hanging. Um, and I'm going to show you that too because I think that is actually one of my favorite looks. Um, I love this right here. The, the cufflinks kind of that pillowed look for the cuffs. Again, it's just a really fun look. I really like the color they chose. It's kind of a gray purple. It's got a kind of a sheen to it. I don't know if the camera is picking that up or not, but it looks really, really good in person. Really good. All right, so there's that hand. If you want to see a little bit more of that, a little bit more of the barrel. Now, this came glued, I think. Uh, there's a glue residue inside, um, but mine came apart. So I don't know if it was intended that you're not supposed to be able to take the gun out. Um, I'm going to maybe glue it back in, or maybe not. I kind of like, like I said, the just the hanging uh, look. Uh, let me kind of show you. Actually, I'm going to kind of see if I can wiggle the gun right out since it's not glued. I want to show you what that looks like. So, again, I just think that that is pretty fun, actually, right? With he's just hanging his hand. 
um, where he doesn't have anything in it. Um, it doesn't take away from the base. I just think he's like, you know, kind of leaning on his uh, knee there. I just think that looks good. I want to know what you guys think though. Um, so anyway, let me go back to the vest itself again. I really like this area. Uh, lots of great texturing. Uh, this is the actual suit from the very last part uh, of that series where, um, you know, Greg Capullo is the artist, uh, Death of the Family. Uh, it's just really good. Really, really good. And you notice the texturing again. It's slight. It's slight texturing, but you can see it. I like the way the buttons are pulling. I think that is really nice. Again, you see that inner coat, which has that pillowing I was talking about. It's really nice. I love the color. And then, of course, you also have the bow tie. Classic Joker stuff here. The colors are a little different, like I said. You don't always get the yellow. You don't always get the green together like that. And then, of course, it has this yellowish-orange flower, which is sculpted. And then, of course, you have the arm going up. Again, that great pillowing effect there. Um, it looks good. Now, some people don't like this arm. They feel like the arm looks weird. Um, but I do want to show you. You can see the skin texture. You can see the folds there on his wrist. So I think it looks, I think it looks better in person than it does in photos. Then, of course, that gloved hand there. And the Joker cane. Uh, I will show you the swap out, too. There's a hand for cards, which looks good. Before we get to the face, let me show you the back side here so you can see exactly what you're getting. Again, nice texture. Again, it's a little simplified with the overall paint. I mean, this part is a plastic material, and it looks like it. I mean, it, it does look a little plasticky to me. Um, the rest is polystone, but the jacket is definitely a PVC-type material. There's the inner part of that coat. Again, I just I love the color on it. It's uh, shinier, um, a little bit in person, but just really good. All right, so let's show you this face, because I know this is what you're wanting to see. <laughs> just look at that, guys. It is terrifying. You have the green eye, you have the blue eye. Oh, this is crazy. That stretch skin, it is one of my favorite portraits. It is just so good. And again, look at the green, look at the skin underneath, uh, look at the teeth. I mean, the teeth are just absolutely incredible. Uh, side profile, you can see again, uh, kind of that skin is stretched. His ear is a different color than the skin. The skin is that uh, kind of that muted <laughs> tan color. It's been rotting away on his face. You can only imagine the stench of that mask. But look how good the hair looks. I just really love this portrait. I really think that this is the main event of the statue for sure. I mean, just look at that. Look at that, guys. Uh, I think the neck looks really good. The skin, uh, you know, pulling on the neck. I just think this portrait, I don't know who sculpted this portrait. I need to find out because he did a phenomenal, or she did a phenomenal job on this. It just looks really good. The eyes come alive. So menacing. Uh, he is looking up a bit more than the other portrait, so do keep that in mind, uh, depending on where you're going to display it. Um, I am seated as I am filming this, so I kind of wanted it on a little bit of an eye level to you guys. So anyway, that's pretty amazing, right? All right, so I, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and switch it out for the other portrait, and with that way we can kind of compare and contrast a little bit. And I'm also going to show you the other swap outs, okay? So that's what that looks like right there. Absolutely incredible, right? It's just absolutely terrifying. All right, so I have the other face. I also have the playing cards in his hand. So that is another swap out there. And then, of course, I have the other swap out, which is the mallet, which looks really good as well. So, uh, again, lots of great swap outs on this one. Uh, let me show you the close-ups of the mallet first. Um, so I think the mallet is really well done. You see great texturing, uh, great shading overall. Again, it's got the bullseye on one side, and then on the other side you have the happy face. Now that can be t switched around. You uh, This uh, mallet part does come off of here, so you can swap it around. If you want to rotate it, you absolutely can, if you want the uh, smiley face up front, uh, which I thought was a good idea. Uh, the mallet itself looks great, but my favorite part of it is the tape. 
I think the tape looks really good at the top. Uh, again, I said it in the live stream, it kind of reminds me of my uh, old Killer Croc that I had. And then as you can see, his hand. Um, you can also take the mallet off out of his hand and have his hand hanging, just like I mentioned before. So both hands really do work. Uh, if yours is glued to the gun though, this might be your best option if you liked that hanging hand look. If you didn't want it with the mallet or the gun, uh, I think I think most people in the live stream liked the mallet better, um, kind of liked that look better. Let me again pan up so you can kind of see what that looks like with the mallet. I think it looks good. Uh, I also wanted to show you the hand up here uh, as the other option. Of course, the playing cards, they're kind of a harder material. I don't know if they're plastic, um, but they do fit in the hand really nice. And so again, that just offers a nice option. I, I think I like the cane better. But let's look at this portrait. It is the classic Joker here. To me, it is a very 70s Joker. Um, but it's definitely more of a comic book look uh, if you want that classic look and not the terrifying Capullo look. I know that's definitely not for everybody, uh, definitely not for every household. But I mean, just look at that. I love the way his eyes are looking up. You notice that at this one, his head is down more. So, you know, this would maybe look really good on a higher shelf. Um, as opposed to maybe you want a little bit lower for the Capullo head sculpt. But isn't that awesome? I mean, it's just so devilish. Again, let me kind of give you an angle here so you guys can see, again, exactly what you're going to get. <laughs> it's just so good. Uh, I know our friend uh, Jeff Delaney at Seeker Sanctuary, uh, he actually canceled this piece, but that was the head sculpt that he was going to put on, um, on this piece, and I think he would have been real happy with it. Um, again, if you haven't checked out Seeker Sanctuary, please do me a favor and subscribe. He is uh, one of our sister channels here, so uh, definitely support him, please. But, I mean, just look at that, guys. Look at that. So crazy. So freaking nuts. So, again, I don't know which one you like better between the original and uh, the Capullo head. But let's, let's uh, kind of do a side-by-side -side here a little bit so you guys can see. <laughs> again, the difference in color. Uh, difference in size. His hair is a lot bigger on this one. Again, he's like looking up a little bit more in this one. But, I mean, just look at those. They look so freaking phenomenal together. Ugh, you get two different looks. You get basically get two completely different statues uh, for the price of one. Again, just really incredible. All right, I know you guys are probably wanting some measurements, so uh, let's do that right now. All right, guys, so now it's time to measure this Joker and see kind of what the dimensions are. Again, these are all approximate. But one thing I do love about this base is it's very compact. Like I said, it's about the size of an Arkham base, which is phenomenal. So let's kind of go this way first, kind of like if we're looking at it straight on. This is approximately about 12 inches, guys, about 12 inches wide, which is incredible. Uh, deep wise, we're looking at, um, it's about 15, about 15 deep. So not bad there either, right? I mean, it's, it's very uh, sizable to be able to display this very easily, in my opinion. Okay, let's look at the height. Now we're talking about to the top of the cane here, and that's going to be the highest point. It's about 35 inches, guys, 35 inches right there. So again, this is not going to take up a tremendous amount of space, which I absolutely love. Um, it's got a great footprint on it and just such a great dynamic piece. But hopefully those measurements help you out a little bit. All right, guys, so I have uh, these two set up. Of course, this is the Arkham uh, Knight version of Joker from Prime 1. And this is the current Iron Studios Joker. Um, as you can see, the footprint <laughs> obviously is a lot a lot smaller uh, on the actual Iron Studios piece, which is, again, one of the reasons why I bought it. Uh, you can really see the difference in size here. Um, just a really big difference. Um, and of course, the height of the Joker ends up being about the height of his cane. Not quite as tall, but of course the Iron Studios is a little taller, um, which is, you know, it is what it is. But here we see side by side two Jokers. Um, they're both very, very good. Um, if I had to choose right now which one I like better between these two, gosh, I th I'm going to go with the Iron Studios piece here. Uh, I think it's amazing. Um, and I've loved this Joker. <laughs> I've loved this one right here for a very long time. Um, but maybe it's telling me that it's time to move on from the Arkham pieces. 
um, which I have been struggling with. But let me just look at that. Look at the difference in detail there. Again, this piece is also incredible. But man, I just, I love this thing. I love it. I love the storytelling. It's just really, really impressive. So again, that's side by side. What do you think about that? Um, I am going to show you next to the Bermejo Joker as well, but uh, I don't know. What do you think, guys? All right, guys, so I have the two side by side up here on top of my cabinet, and I do apologize for the, the light glaring off of them. Uh, but you can see the size difference here. Uh, the Bermejo Joker from Prime 1, definitely beefier, bulkier. Um, you know, he's a little bit smaller, skinnier for sure. Um, they're both one-third scale. Uh, I do feel like sometimes Prime 1 is a little oversized, uh, which I actually like. <laughs> I like the oversized um, bodies on these, but you can really see the difference in head size. So there's the, again, the Prime 1, and you know, quite a bit smaller. Uh, I do think that these look good together, actually. Um, is there still a better piece? I, I still think I prefer the Bermejo, uh, but this one's a close second. I really love this thing. I'm so glad I got it. Um, and again, just a lot smaller footprint, obviously. Um, but it's, you know, it's comparable. It's obviously not as big as Bane over there, <laughs> which is just still insane. But again, that's what these two look like side by side. Just to give you an idea of size, maybe how much room they'll take up in your collection. But uh, again, I love absolutely both of these. I'm so glad I own both of them. I'm so lucky. Oh, you're so cool. All right, guys, so there you have it. I mean, I'm just admiring this incredible portrait. Uh, absolutely, I'm in love with this thing. It is so impressive. I really like the statue a lot. It was really interesting to see them side by side with the Prime 1 pieces. And again, I feel like this one holds up to those. The detail is not as detailed, I guess you can say, as some of the Prime 1 pieces. Again, the texture is just different. The paint's just different. But that doesn't mean that this is any less. It's just different. Um, I am so glad that I went ahead and picked this up. I still don't know exactly where it's going to go in my collection. Uh, again, collector's problems, right? But I highly recommend this piece. I think it is really, really well done. It is currently shipping from Sideshow, so if you're interested in ordering it, I will put a link down below. If you do use that link, it does help support the channel, guys, so thank you for that. Um, I feel like at the $1,000 price point or slightly under, is a really good deal for this piece. Um, you know, would it be nice to have an $800 statue? Sure. But I feel like there's a lot of quality here. There's a lot of good swap outs. I think the paint applications are really, really good. And I think that everybody that gets this, in my honest opinion, I think everybody that, that picks this up is going to be very, very happy uh, with this purchase. Uh, again, that face is not for everybody. So it's nice that they have, uh, let me grab this other one. It's nice that they have the other portrait here. Um, that you can use because, you know, it's not as creepy. Um, but it's nice that you have the option to do the different swap outs. And again, this is the one that I'm going to be leaving on. I think it's incredible. It really does capture that Greg Capullo New 52 um, aesthetic. And I just really, really like this one. Like, again, let me give you another spin here so you guys can see it up, uh, a little bit better. Um, but I do want to know what you think about this piece. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below what you think about it. Uh, are you going to be picking it up because of this review? I've already had like five or six people said, Chris, I already ordered it because of the unboxing. So I always like to hear that. That means a lot to me. That means I'm doing my job here on YouTube to show you guys the best of the best um, out there from all these amazing statue companies. So again, I do want to know your thoughts down below. Um, if you are new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, click that notification bell. Also, if you want to take everything one step further, you can consider hitting the join button. So many people have joined recently. Thank you so very much for your support. You do get early access to the videos and also other perks depending on what tier you uh, join up with. But again, I am very sold with this piece. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But again, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. And I'll see you next time right here in the Batcave. Bye, everybody. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.